everyone, I'm making this video for people who have attended my session. If you haven't attended my session, you can still follow along and get a lot of good information on how to make your first grid and topic. So as you know, you probably have already signed in. If you haven't, you can do sign up today. We have a code that you can use for 45 days of free Flipgrid that you can find in the blog underneath of this video. But for those of you who have already signed in, we're gonna to go to Educator Login, and it's gonna take us to what's called the dashboard. And up in the top of the dashboard, you can see that you're in a section called My Grids. There are other sections we will talk about in a future video. But here I can see that I have 29 grids. I can scroll down and see them all. And right now, we're gonna go through making a new grid. Now remember, I said a grid is like an overarching theme and inside of that grid you have topics. So you might have something like the outsider's book as your grid and topics might be Pony Boy and Johnny. So there are six ways to build a grid. Some of them come with pre-populated information and so I often just go to custom and build my own. And that's what we're going to do today. So the name of the grid is going to be called Example Grid so that I remember to delete it. Here under Flipgrid Code, you could just have this simple Flipgrid Code, maybe pass it out using Google Classroom or anything that you might pass out links with. But because you have the 45 days free, you can make this a customized link. So I'm going to call it Example 2000. And 18 and the grid purpose is going to be something that you say what is the purpose of this grid I'm going to put example purpose and I am going to let you fill that in for whatever you would like when you do yours we can change the security and privacy we can turn off some of the features like we can make it active or inactive and we can customize the picture that's associated with it. I'm gonna use the dog because I am a huge dog fan, or I could download my own, making it and say something like Canva, and make it unique to go with the book that I'm doing. So now I create the grid by going down to the lower right-hand corner. This creates the grid. Now Flipgrid forces you to add a discussion topic. So here's where I'm going to add a topic inside of my grid. And I may have 20 topics inside of a grid or maybe just one. I'm gonna call this example topic. I have the option to do between 15 seconds and one minute and 30 seconds if it's free. And I have all of these if I have the paid for version. So I'm gonna choose 30 seconds because it's my favorite. Here is where I can put the example or um, I can put the topic or question, so I'm going to call this example question. But you might put something that you want kids to respond to because they're going to see this when they go to record. I can change the privacy, which is great. I can change the topic status by having it um, inactive or frozen, or maybe I want it to pop up on Monday or on Saturday, you know, who knows. And here are the topic resources. I like to put a jiffy just to make it look cute, but I could record a video response of myself telling them what to do. I could upload a video like a TED talk maybe and have them respond to that. I could put an image I want them to respond to. Now I can add maybe a Google Doc here with a link to more directions. I can change the response features by taking off stickers and drawings, which I usually do at the beginning while my kids are getting used to Flipgrid. Emoji reactions I never take off because I they love those. And I can look around and see if I want to make things public, private, have, give some feedback. And when I'm happy, I create the topic. So you can see that my example 2018 is the name that I've given for this grid. Once the kids go to the grid, then they can click on the topic they want. So let's go try that. I'm going to go to Flipgrid and pretend I am a student. now. You can't see this, but I'm just typing in flipgrid.com. And here's where a student would put in that example, 2018. They'd use this, they click on the arrow, and it takes them right to this example grid. 
Now here's my example topic. I didn't put any kind of video or jiffy to go with it. Normally I do. And they have to click right inside of this white part and it gets them to the place where they can use this green add button to add their video response. Very simple. Now when I'm done and if I'm in this environment with my kids, I can go over here to the three dots. And three dots means more options. What are some other things I can do? And one of the options is I can return to my teacher dashboard. And in this teacher dashboard, I once again see all of my grids. I can go to the example grid and I can watch student responses from here. So I'm going to stop here. We've made a grid. We've added a topic. And in our next video, we're going to look at what we can do with some of these features that live to the right of the grid.